Good evening. Welcome to our Collision Bible Study. It is Thursday, February 4th. I um, want to thank those of you that continue to watch these videos, those of you that watch these uh, Bible studies. Uh, my, uh, my youngest brother's girlfriend, Joanne, said that this is her favorite video, is the Bible study, that she loves uh, studying the Bible. Uh, and I, I told her it's one of the uh, it's one of the least watched videos for whatever reason. Uh, good evening, Sherry. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions uh, today. Uh, good evening, John. Good evening, Kim. Um, God has been t telling me recently uh, to speak more to seekers, uh, just as much as to the saved. Uh, most of you that watch these videos are, are, are Christians, people that are already saved. And God has been laid on my heart that he wants to reach what they call seekers. Let me explain what that is. Uh, seekers are unsaved people that are that are searching, that are seeking. They're 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 looking for purpose in life. I can remember when I was at that point in my life, when I was uh, young, new, married for a few years, I had my own business, I was successful, had every I had everything, but there was just something missing in my life. There was something that, that I knew that there was something more than my life that I that I didn't have, and I was seeking. I, I went looking for for what that what that was, and and I found it. Uh, naturally, it was it was Jesus, and so God has been telling me that in my videos I need to reach out just a little bit more to to seekers, those that are searching. Uh, just just recently, a young man has been watching our videos, and this morning I talked about uh, how much do you love the Bible, and I said that you can tell a Christian just by how they're warm and their Bible is, and he. Uh, he was uh, text back or responded back saying that he didn't have a Bible, and so he went online to to purchase one and was asking me about which one he should get. So he didn't even have a Bible yet, and that excites me that we're reaching people like that that are that are that are seeking, uh, seeking God. Um, so God wants us wants me to teach and speak to seekers, uh, and He wants me to to of course continue to 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 teach Christians to help them to grow in their faith. This was exactly what Jesus did. Uh, he taught uh, and trained his disciples. Uh, he spoke to the crowds, uh, the seekers, and then he encouraged his disciples to do the same thing. He, he, he spent time training them so that they too would go out and speak to the crowds, the ones that were seeking. Uh, in Matthew 9, we read this in verses 12 and 13. It says, On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. He says, For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus was eating with a bunch of tax collectors and sinners, and, and some of the church leaders came to his disciples and said, do you realize that G your, your, your master, Jesus, is in there eating with sinners and tax collectors? And Jesus responded with this. It's healthy, don't need a doctor. Uh, you don't need Jesus. You already have Jesus. But those that are seeking need, now don't get me wrong, you need to grow in your faith. But you need to grow in your faith so that you too can do what Jesus asked us to do, to, to share the, the gospel. Um, you, those of you saved don't need uh, Jesus. You already have him. Just like the sick don't need a doctor. Uh, but those still seeking need Jesus just like the sick need a doctor. Jesus didn't come to this earth to, to save the Christians. Jesus came to earth to save the lost and the, and the seekers. Good evening, Paul. Uh, and that he, and he wants us to do that very same thing. Uh, you all know the Great Commission, the, 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 what Jesus said in his very final before he was taken up into heaven for the last time for, for us to never see him again. Uh, this is what he told the, uh, the disciples and, and basically what he would tell us uh, today. In, uh, in Matthew 28, he says this, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
He's saying, now you, those of you that have been trained and taught now, now, now you go out now to those that are seeking out to, to, to reach out to them, to teach them now. This is what God is, wants us to do and what he's kind of been laying on my heart a little bit more uh, to start doing, to start talking a little bit more to the, uh, to the, to the seekers. So let me open with a prayer. Father, I, is, I thank you, God, for your word. It's just so powerful. It is so powerful. If we are seeking the truth, uh, you're not going to find it anywhere but in your word. It is you, God. It's literally you. Uh, it's a total truth and nothing but the truth. So, God, as we dwell in your word again tonight, teach us something. Uh, we pray this in your name. Amen. We're in Acts chapter 13, and, uh, and we're going to continue in our study here. I'm going to read from, in, uh, verses 13 through, through 19. Said from Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga and Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. And after reading the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a special message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our fathers. He made, he made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of the country. He endured their conduct for about 40 years in the desert. He overthrew seven nations in Canaan and gave them land to, the, land to their people as his inheritance. All this took about 400 and 50 years. Now, Luke, who's the author of Acts, uh, tells us that Paul was asked to speak in the synagogue. Now, th this is a little bit strange because you know that, that the religious leaders uh, didn't like uh, Jesus. Uh, they're the ones that, that encouraged the crowd to turn on them, to have them put to, to, have them, have them put to death. And they and they, we read earlier where they had the disciples flogged and everything else. But but in this particular area, they they allowed Paul to speak in their synagogue, and then they encouraged him to to encourage. In fact, they encouraged him to speak. Uh, now it was interesting that he said he spoke to the Jews and the Gentiles. The Gentiles were those that were non-Jews, and they were in the Jewish synagogue. Now, even that was was amazing that the, that this particular area allowed the Gentiles into the synagogue. It was synagogue was just for the for the Jewish people, but here they had God had taken them a long way, taken them a long, long way. They opened their doors to the Gentiles. They opened their doors to the to the apostles to to teach, and so Paul Paul starts teaching them. And the first thing he teaches them is about the mighty works that God had done with his chosen people, the Jews. He talks about how the Jews prospered even though they were under slavery with the, with the Egyptians. He talked about how God powerfully led them out of Egypt, freeing them from slavery. He talked about how God endured, put up with their conduct for 40 years in the desert. Then he talked about how God Conquered, powerfully conquered seven nations in Canaan for the Jews to inherit the promised land, and that God did this for 450 years. Now, I, when you read the Bible like this, you always need to ask yourself, what, what's God saying to us today? What, what, what is God telling us today? At that time, Paul was telling the Jews uh, about what God had done for their forefathers. And telling the Gentiles what God had done for the promised people. So what is what what is his words for us today? Uh, first, that we as Christians are now his chosen people. In the Old Testament, in the early part of the New Testament, the Jews were God's chosen people. But then God opened the doors up. Opened the doors up to the Gentile, the non-Jewish people. And, and we just read in, in, in Matthew how Jesus told his disciples to go and teach the gospel to the very ends of the earth, to open it up to everybody now. Good evening, Juan. Henry, wow, good to have you joining us. 
uh, I was had the privilege of uh, of marrying Henry many years ago. Um, so we are now God's chosen people, just like the Jews were, and that God continues to do mighty works among us, His people. If God did mighty works with his chosen people, the Israelites, then God is certainly going to do mighty works through us, his chosen people, Christians. Uh, and he will do it again for 450 years like he did the first time. This is exactly what God did with the early disciples. We'll, we'll read uh, some, some of the things that, that, that God did with the, with the early disciples. Now, again, we have to be careful because... What he did with the disciples is totally different than what he does with us today because he was just starting his ministry. He performed many miracles to show that he had come from God. And then he empowered his disciples, his apostles, to do the same thing, to perform miracles to show the power of God. We don't necessarily need to have that today because we have the full, we have the full story, the full word. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that God doesn't still do miracles, uh, we, we see where he does that in, in many areas where, where, where the gospel is new. It, people talk all the time about the miracles that, that, that God is doing in, in India. We hear that all the time from, our, from the pastors we support there in India. So it's, he's still doing it, but he did it much more prevalently with the early disciples. 1620 said, then disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them. And confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. God was with them when they went out to preach the gospel. And he, and he gave them the power to do miracles to accompany it to, to show the power. To show the power of the gospel. And then in Acts, for, Acts 14.3, we read this. says, So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. God, God gave them the power to do miraculous signs and wonders to, 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 to give their message power. Just like Jesus' message had power because of the, the miracles that he, that he did. And then in Acts 19, 11 and 12, it says this. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Just, just taking Paul's handkerchief and, and apron to... Had, the, had God put power in his clothes even. So God did some miraculous things to the disciples, but the disciples did what Jesus asked them to do. Remember, I just read the Great Commission. Jesus told them, now you go out to the ends of the world and share the gospel, the good news about Jesus. And that's what they did. And as a result of doing that, God powerfully used them and gave them incredible power. Now, Here's what we need to realize. God wants to work powerfully in us today. He, he want, now he's, doesn't mean he's going to give us the, the power to do miracles, etc. But it still means that, he's gonna, that he wants to work through us powerfully. In John 14, 12, Jesus says, tells, us, tells us this. And I will do whatever you... Let's see. Hold on. Let me uh, make sure I got the right one. John 14, 12. Oh, here. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. They will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. He said, I'm leaving and I'm going to the Father. And the things that I did, you are going to be able to do also. Jesus is not here anymore. The disciples are not here anymore. Does that mean that the gospel just ends now? No, no, of course not. God enables now you and I to go out now to do the same things that he did, the same things that the disciples did. He may not give us the same power of miracles and wonders, but he still wants to use us mightily, mightily. 
in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 7, he tells us how he will do this through us. It says this, Now to each one of you the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To each one of us, it says, God has given us a spir at least one spiritual gift. Each one of us has received a spiritual gift. An incredible, incredible, these are, these are incredible gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just name a few of them here. It says, to one, there, to, the, to one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith of the same Spirit. To another one, gifts, all these different gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. Gives you the gift of giving. Some people have the gift of giving where they can freely give their money. With It says, God loves a cheerful giver. You can only give freely of your money if you have the spiritual gift of giving. The spiritual gift of helps. A spiritual gift of helps is when you see that there's a need somewhere, you immediately jump in and start doing it. That was the first gift God gave me, the very first gift God gave me. It's one of the, it's one of the gifts that most of the time that God gives early Christians. I was at a church, and when I saw that people were setting up or they needed help, I just immediately jumped in and helped them. It was just something that I wanted to do. I wanted to help them. Wherever they needed help, I would help. Now, you can't do this today now, but I would be driving down the freeway and see someone broken down on the side of the freeway. I would pull over to help them. If they had a flat tire, I'd help them put it on. If they didn't have a spare, they'd get in my vehicle and I'd go down to get them a spare and go back and put it on their car. I, I, I didn't, you, know, you can't be careful to do those things today, but that was the first gift God gave me, the gift of helps. Now, I didn't do that before I became a Christian. But when I became a Christian, I had the gift, and, and, God, and God used that gift powerfully in me, powerfully in me. I don't know what gift God has given you, but God wants to use it powerfully within you, just like he did with the early disciples. He, he, want, he, he wants you to, to use those gifts. Uh, listen to what he says here in, in, in Ephesians. He says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do these good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God, when I was doing all those things back then, God had other works planned for me that I wasn't even aware of. I was, I was just helping people at that time. But then he slowly started giving me other gifts. He slowly started giving me a love for the word and then gave me a gift of teaching. He slowly gave me the, the gift of being organized and, and allowed me to be head of, 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 of different youth groups. God slowly, just within the last few years, has given me the gift of giving where I can freely give my money. You, when, you start, when you start allowing God to work in you powerfully and you use the one gift that God has given you and he sees that you're using it, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to give you another one. Imagine this. If, you have, if you're a boss at work and you have an employee, a bunch of employees, and you have one employee that does everything you tell them to do. You gave them something to do, and, 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 and that person just works at it diligently. And the other ones just kind of slough off. And now you have something else to do. Are you going to give it to the person that's sloughing off? No, you're going to give it to the person that worked hard to do the tasks that you'd already given him. And then that person rises up in the company. Well, it's that same thing with God. You use the one gift that God has given you faithfully, and then he gives you another one. You use that one, and then he gives you, God has given me multiple gifts now in my lifetime. Why? Because I, I use them. Now, now listen to this one. This, this is what some of you need to do now, okay? In 2 Timothy 1.6, it says this. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power. Paul is saying, now, 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 those of you watching this, if you're not using this gift, God wants you to take that gift that you have and fan it into flames. Because it's probably just barely flicking. It's probably just barely flicking. You're not hardly using it at all. And God is saying, fan it into flame. Start, start, 
using it. St start being powerful with that gift. God did not give you a spirit of timidity. He gave you a spirit of power. You have that spirit living within you. Use that gift that God has given you to do mighty works for the Lord. Just like the, we read today what the apostles did. Allow, allow God to, to use you. Now, here's what I'm going to do. And I was reluctant to doing this. There's a passage here in 2 Corinthians where Paul is going to, people are questioning his, whether he's an apostle or not. And so Paul says, uh, I'm going to show you that I'm an apostle. I hesitate to do this. Uh, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm boasting. But if I am, I'm boasting in the Lord. And then he goes on to talk about all the persecution that he went through. Being flogged four times. Being struck with rods three times. Getting the death penalty of being stoned. And he goes on to talk about what he did. Morning, Good evening, Elroy. I, I'm going to do that same thing. I, I, I hope you don't take this that, that I'm that I'm boasting about, I'm not boasting, I'm doing this to encourage you. Every Before I do every any message, I pray this prayer, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit, empower me with your Spirit, speak through me, giving me your words to share, so I can teach, so I can train, so I can challenge, so I can encourage, and so I can rebuke your people. That This is where I want to encourage where this is where I want to encourage you, okay? I'm going to use my life as an example to encourage each of you so that you can know that you can do mighty things. For for those of you watching, if you're sitting there, I'm not doing that much. I was there at one time. I was there at one time, but I wasn't satisfied where I was. I wanted to be used more by God. And so he gave me one gift as I shared with you and I started using it and I was excited about using it and then he gave me another one and I was excited and I'm still excited today. So this, allow me to, um, I had a lucrative business, an extremely lucrative business, okay? I mean, I, I could easily have been a multimillionaire, but I gave that up to do ministry. I gave it up to do ministry I, I, re, I found out that just having material things and money doesn't, it only makes you happy for a little bit. Now, again, it's no, no fun being poor, but I realized that, that ministry was way more important, at least in my life. So I gave up a very lucrative job to do ministry. Uh, I, built, I built up a life savings, and I spent most of my life savings helping people in my church, in the church I was at. I bought several vehicles for people. I've helped people with their rent. I've helped people with their mortgage payment. I've fixed up, I don't know how many different vehicles. And I did it with joy, with total joy. They said, God says there's more joy in giving than receiving. Boy, that is so true. The people received from me, but I had the joy of giving and I don't resent it one, one bit. Um, I, I do, full-time ministry, um, teaching, pastoring, collision for free. I do it for free. Been doing it now for 11 years. I, I don't draw a salary. I don't draw a salary because I don't want to be a burden to any of you. Paul said that same thing. Paul said, if you teach, if you're a teacher, a pastor, you deserve an income. Paul said, but I'm not going to because I don't want to be a burden to any of you. So he says, I'll, I'll, I'll make tents at, for a living so I can keep on sharing the gospel. And, and that's what I've done. And, and I prepare 12 messages every week. Every week I do 12 messages, 12 videos. Now, I, I, I hesitate saying but most pastors do one. They do a Sunday morning and that's it. I, I've been doing 12 of them now for ever since the pandemic. But I was lead, I was doing a lot. I was doing many things before that. Uh, I I've, I teach every age group in in collision. God has given me a love for children. He's given me a love for youth. He's given me a love for adults. He's given me a love for seniors. And I'm using that gift to teach every age group in in collision. Uh, 
I, I do all the work of Klesia. Most churches have secretaries, they have co-pastors, they have all kinds of staff. I don't have any staff. I do it all myself. I do all the bookkeeping. I do all of uh, all the corporation things. I do everything myself. And I do all of this at the age of 75. I'm still doing this. And, and, and I'll keep on doing it. As long as I can stay healthy, I'll keep on doing this. And then I do other things. Uh, as an example, I took my dying brother into our house to take care of him now in his final months. Uh, and, it's, and it's not easy. Last night we, we gave him a bath, washed his hair, and then get, my, well, my brother's teach my younger brother's here and he's teaching me to do that. He, 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 he washed my brother's hair, showed me how to do it, gave my brother a bath on the bed to show me how, how he does it. And now I'll be doing that now when he's going to be leaving in a couple of weeks. I'll be doing that then. Uh, now, again, I could probably go on and I'm not doing this to boast. I'm doing this to encourage you, to encourage you that if I can do it, why can't you? Why can't you do some of these same things? Start using, I, you all have a spiritual gift. I just read that to you. Take that gift, whatever it is now, and start using it mightily. Mightily, because that's what God wants you to do. Use it mightily and then see what God will do in your life. He'll give you another one. And then you use that one mightily, and he'll give you another one. I don't care what age you are. Elroy, I doubt that you're as old as I am. I doubt that you're as old as I am. You worked hard all your life. I know you did. But don't just retire now. God wants to use you. you you've got built up all that incredible knowledge within you, all that wisdom within you. God wants to use it. He wants it to use it mightily. God did not give us a spirit of timidity. He gave us a spirit of power. You have that power. Each one of you. Each one of you have that power. Wow. Simply fan that gift into flame. Fan it into flame. Allow God to use you mightily. And a word now to you seekers. If there's people out there that are seeking God yet, um, you're probably at a point where I was in my life. Where you're starting to ask yourself, does my life have any purpose? Does my life have any purpose? And I can tell you that when you, when you invite Jesus into your life, when you invite Jesus into your life, boy, your life drastically changes. You, you can't have God, because when you give your life to Jesus, God, God, God comes and dwells within you through his spirit. The spirit of Jesus enters you and lives within you, never to leave you. You can't have the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God in you, and be the same old, same old. You are going to change. You are going to change. And then God, then you'll find out that you have purpose in life. That, that, that you have mighty purpose in life. And I can guarantee you, you will not regret making that decision you will not regret it so if you're seeking just simply it's it's just as simple as saying jesus i, I want you to be a part of my life scripture tells us here in revelation that he stands outside the door of your heart knocking say just just let me in let me into your life he doesn't force his way into your life he doesn't want robots he just gently knocks on the door and he says, if you open that door, I will come into your life. And when I come into your life, I'll give you spiritual gifts so you can do powerful, th powerful things. And so you can have meaning and purpose in your life and your life will never be the same again. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I pray that you have... Uh, you have spoken to your people. I pray, God, that you have spoken for anyone listening here that is seeking you, that is that without even realizing they're looking for purpose in their life. Uh, God, I pray that you knock on the door to their heart, and I pray that they open that door for you and allow you into their life. God, continue to do mighty things through us, and God, help us to fan into flame the spiritual gifts you've given us. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. Um,
Tomorrow morning is our daily devotion. We're going to the book of Matthew. We just finished the Sermon on the Mount. Now we're going to go into the healings that uh, that Jesus starts doing. So you can uh, join us at uh, 8 o'clock every morning. So tomorrow's Friday. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. And I would love, appreciate if you would uh, push that share button and share these videos so other, other Christians can grow in their faith and seekers can hear a little truth, more truth about Jesus. Yes, John. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great night.